how many of you want to make a difference with your offer to be able to make offers from a place of not just effectiveness to have clients say yes, but from a place of like total open hearted love, like you make your offer and you don't shut down your heart at all. And I'm curious for how many of you Would you be willing to go out there and do the work that you want to do, the healing work, the transformational work, the mentorship work, changing people's lives? Like ultimately you'd kind of want to do it even if you didn't get paid. Is that true for some of you? So let's look at this for a moment because you can't be the light of the world if you can't pay your light bill. And so one of my commitments to you today is to help you see that part of the reason why people have a transformation and a bigger transformation is because they invest. Take a breath into that. I know some of you want to be able to do this without money. Like, let's just do this and let's just not, not, not have to deal with the money part of it. But what if the transformation was 10 or 100 times more because people invest? Give me an aha if you can feel the energy of that. Can you feel it? When people pay, they pay attention. It's because of the investment. When I made my first offer from stage, I was terrified. I woke up shaking. I couldn't sleep. I had to take all kinds of melatonin and valerian and all the things to get to sleep. Maybe got three or four hours of sleep. Woke up. It was my first 80 person event. It was like seven, eight years ago, probably. And I rented this little conference center right on the ocean. Heather Houston sang to open us up. And I did three days worth of business training. And on day two, before we did our evening session, I made an offer for women to stay with me for an entire year. I was like, so freaked out that like my friend, Serena Andrea describes it. Like my toes were curling in my shoes, right? I barely got the words out. My biggest fear was that somebody in the audience or maybe multiple somebodies would be horribly offended at my offer and how much I was charging. Pop a yes in the chat if you can relate to this. So I got off stage and this very powerful, very incredible woman came marching right up to me and and waving her fist in my face. This is highway robbery. She said, highway robbery. I tell you, I can't afford this. I'm a single mom. Who are you to just get on stage and just make an offer for thousands of dollars to spend the year with you? And of course, it was like my throat dropped into my shoes. It was like everything I was terrified of happening right in front of me. Who here can relate to like sometimes your biggest fear just like has to come true so that you can just like move past it. So I just said to her, gosh, I'm so sorry. I did not mean to offend you. I am completely committed to supporting whoever wants to do this program. And, you know, um, if, if you want to talk more with my team about just what we can create together, um, please do. And then I just kind of gracefully exited and went into the bathroom and locked the door and started sobbing. So my team talked me off the ledge. We had several applications come in that night. People were wanting to do the program. I woke up the next day for day three of my event feeling pretty raw and pretty vulnerable, but willing to get back on stage. So I'm at the back of the room, having my little team huddle with my team waiting. You know, it's not quite time for the participants to come in. There's a big sign on the door that says doors open, right? 9 a.m. It's like 845. And same woman comes bustling in the room. And of course, my heart sinks and I'm thinking, oh, here we go again. And she walks kind of more calmly up to the back table and she says, can I give you something? And I said, sure. And she hands me a check for the entire amount of the program pay in full. This was our first pay in full true story. I looked at her and I was like, but, but I thought you said you couldn't afford it. I thought, I thought you said that this was not a fit. And she said, oh, I was just triggered. You can't believe a word I say when I'm triggered. I just pulled the money out of one of my retirement accounts. It's that important to me. So I just want to say to every single one of you that we cannot make up the story that people can't afford our services. We can't 
be in conclusion of what people can afford and what they can't afford. And we can't necessarily take people's objections at face value. I want to remind every single one of you that again, it's our job to get out there and make the offering. We can't control how people react. We can't control what people do or say, but we can control our own commitment. So take a breath into that because I promise you, it is unlikely that you're going to have that kind of a response when you make your offer. However, if you do, I invite you to wrap yourself in golden light and to remember that this is what being a leader is all about. Standing tall when others are going a little crazy, getting yourself resource from people that you trust so you can get back out there and make the difference that only you came to make. And for you to remember that when people pay, they pay attention. When we invest, when we invest in ourselves, we get an even bigger transformation. And so whether you have an extra retirement account or not, like my client did, who, by the way, she went on to build a six-figure business within about 14 months of working with us. She continued and stayed another year. But whether you have an extra retirement account or not, or whatever your relationship is with money right now, I invite you to remember that you have been called to give this gift at an important moment in history, and you deserve to be paid for it. In fact, your business will not grow and scale and become leverageable if we don't get you really making money, right? We risk you running out of the passion and the time and the enthusiasm to grow this thing if we don't get you putting out offers into the world that people are excited to invest in. And it's not as mysterious as a lot of people want to make it out to be. The secret to making money in these businesses, write this down, is that you create offers that people want to buy. And what's so exciting is that once you have those offers, it's like such a relief. It's like, oh, once I have my offer and I know how to get people on my virtual stage as a virtual speaker, I can become a prof profitable speaker. It's not as mysterious as a lot of people want to make the story up that it is. 